Where do I look? Somewhere. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, what inspired you to start Professor Without Borders? Um, Professor Without Borders really, well, it was an, an idea between uh, three friends. Um, and we did discuss it more and more over the time we were working together at university. So I'm also lecturing, also visiting lecture from time to time with Caroline. And we thought, you know, we have such a great opportunity here in, in the UK to study at all of these amazing universities and have all of that incredibly, incredible education. But not everyone benefits from it, and that is just not fair. And rather than, um, you know, the students that can't afford to come here, we go to them. So we thought, what can be our model to make this a reality for everyone, that no matter where they are, we bring high-skilled teachers to them. And that's really how the idea of Forrester's Without Borders came up. What do you hope this company can achieve? Well, I it's an NGO, yeah. but um, well, we really, um, well, for now, we really are working on partnerships as much as we can and as much as well as we can fund. So we rely really heavily on funding and on people that really um, feel and see the impact that we're doing. Um, so right now we're working on expansion as much as we can. We're in Sierra Leone, we're in Uganda and Thailand, talking with authorities for Jordan now and China and India as well. So we're growing quite fast and it's incredible. Um, and yeah, that is really in the first round what we want to do. Second round now also we just signed uh, our first partnership with a think tank. So we launched officially our think tank today. And then uh, I would say the third round will also be student exchange, uh, so that students from the visiting countries can come and study here. So we're also in conversation with Richmond University for that. And then vice versa, Richmond University students coming with us and uh, having the cultural experience and everything else around it. What have you learned throughout this process? Um, well, it was, you know, as with any startup, I think that is how you can really call it. Um, it's, it's a bumpy street. So uh, the first year we were in Sierra Leone, um, we had logistical issues that we were obviously not uh, prepared for. So uh, what I learned is really it's go by day um, because we're working with cultures and with countries and with people which we don't work normally with. So it is really a learning process from both sides, from the inviting university as well as from Professor Dot Borders. And uh, I think that is the beauty of it, and that is, yeah, that is what I have learned so far from it, that th there is no basic framework for a startup NGO. It's just really to go as it comes. What's the biggest challenge that you faced? The biggest challenge that we faced? Well, again, you know, you, d you never know how it is at the universities when we arrive. So it is always good to interact with universities on paper, through email, phone, and Skype. But once you really have deployed your teachers and you arrive on the ground, um, and I can speak for myself, I was teaching in Sierra Leone for the first year, um, it was difficult because also the infrastructures and the resources we have were very limited, and we did not realize how limited we really were. So we worked with what we had, but that made us really understand that we need to be even more prepared. Um, other than that, yeah, again, you know, it's... Uh, the biggest difficulties is also funding. We want to make it self-reliant um, because, well, it is a dream of Caroline Madrix and me to make this happen, but what if, and God forbid, something would happen to us? Um, who, who puts it forward then for us? And so we really want to, kind of like, like an infant, we help it walk, and then the infant needs to, needs to do its own life. And that is really what we hope it will achieve, that people believe in it, people support it, and walk with us to make it grow, and uh, seeing the legacies in the next 10, 10, 20, 30 years, and see what has happened with the students. What's been your favorite part? Um, well, really everything, even the difficulties. But uh, I love teaching in Sierra Leone. It was really incredible. Um, I was terrified, I need to say. Uh, I learned a lot by myse of myself. But it's just really, the, yeah, it's just, you always underestimate uh, the situations and uh, I think that it is, that, that was it for me. So, um, yeah. Great, thank you. Thank you so much.